Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get very toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. I think he's my guardian angel. Aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are the dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. Hello and welcome to The Dog Rescuers. Today's show is about dogs whose owners can't or won't take care of them anymore, like Chino here, who was found abandoned in the most terrible state. We'll hear her incredible story of survival later. Won't we? You're going to be the star. We'll just stay here. I can't get up. Coming up... Hello, sausage. Hello. Inspector Sarah Gardner meets a dog with a skin condition that's causing him to constantly itch. Oh, darling, that looks really sore. But his owner's bad health means they can't give him the care he needs. It, you know, he can't continue as he is, can he? No, he can't. No. It's all right, darling. It's OK. Inspector Anthony Pulfer rescues a helpless dog who's been cruelly abandoned. It's just, just, just unimaginable. I've never, ever had that in my career, to find an animal in such a, a vulnerable position. And we'll meet some of the sweetest puppies we've ever had on the show who were left alone in suffocating heat. They were so unpuppy like They were very quiet, very thirsty. And to see them now acting like proper puppies and causing chaos is just lovely because they are little personalities again, which is brilliant. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> Hello. Hello. Did you manage to get that, Goose? No, I wasn't there. First, we're in Derby with Inspector Sarah Gardner. Um, we're off to a job regarding a Shih Tzu that has no fur and blackened skin. It suggests a flea allergy, um, potentially a long-term flea allergy. Uh, if the skin's blackened, um, potentially infection. Sometimes it's not quite what it seems, but if it's a white dog and it's got black skin, then there's definitely something going wrong there. The moment you knock on a door, you never really know what you're going to walk into. You have your allegation in your head. But until you've walked through that door, you have no idea what you're going to be greeted with. bother you. Um, RSPCA, yeah. I've had a call about your dog saying yeah. that it's got a really bad, well, skin problem, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it is because I can't get out. It's my wife. Come in, come in. All right, OK. <laughs> Hello, sausage. Hey, right. He's on your back, look. Yeah, yeah. What's his name? Hello, darling. Charlie. Charlie? Yes, it's me. All right. Oh, darling, that looks really sore, doesn't it's it? Sure, in his self way. Yeah, you can smell it on him, can't you? And is it something he's always had a bit of a problem with his skin? He's always had a problem with his skin. Yeah. What we normally do is cut him short Charlie. so it doesn't affect him so much, you know what I mean? Oh, sausage. Charlie's skin is black, hot and matted. It's obviously really bothering him as he's constantly scratching it. It is quite bad. And typically, your flea allergy would be around the back end, whereas this is around his trunk and on the yeah, front, yeah. which is more of a mange. Um, mange? It's, it's from a mite. Um, it, it can be controlled. It's just a different set of medication. Oh, but it would mean that he would need regular bathing and special yeah. medicated shampoos and things like that. 
Charlie's owners have tried to look after him, but the flea treatment they've used hasn't done the trick. And then it's just like come back again, like, you know what I mean? And keeping on top of him, like, it's like a lot for me, like, because, like, well, God, I have to wipe and yeah, it just can't get it all, you know what I mean? Yeah. Often we will find that people's life has changed um, through situations beyond their control. And actually, what they have done previously with their dog has been great. And something's changed. So in these circumstances, um, I think we kind of bridge the gap where we are in a position to, to help them and to help the animal. Are you thinking that you might want to sign him over? Well, I think that, like, the best idea is because, like, I don't get the time to look after him, no, like... No. I'd like to, I'd like, I'd love to, like, you know, like, I used to Hello. take him to the park with a lot, like... Yeah. ...and next door neighbour, but I just don't get the time now to look after my wife, that's what the problem is. No. More than anything. Well, have a word with your wife and see what you want to do. Charlie's owners have their own health difficulties. Because of my problems, I've, I've got... And we can't do... What, yeah. He's got a skin problem. He so. has, yeah. Yeah, needs quite a bit and of work he's that. Really bad. Well, if you want, I can, I can, I can take him. We can I rehome him. He's, and... he's dog, yeah, he seems like a lovely yeah, little boy. He is. I used to get someone to come and take him and groom him. And yeah. That, but that, that's quite expensive. For it is. Him yeah. Now. Yeah. But you can't even walk, walk in these days. I guess we just say I can't walk that far then, like, you know, Mike. You know, it's not right. <laughs> no, no. It... Need to walk. I think you have to wear many hats when you do this job. It's about empathy, it's about understanding people's situations, and ultimately it's about understanding the needs of that dog in that situation and ensuring that the best thing happens for them. It's just making him worse and worse, you know what I mean? Like, women carrying on like his. It just makes you feel bad, doesn't it, I think? Mean, yeah. It, yeah. You know, he can't continue as he is, can he? No, he can't. No. He can't, cos he's... To me, he's suffering. You're like punishing him, aren't you, really? That's what it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> they agree to sign Charlie over, knowing that it's best for him to go to a new family who have the time to look after him properly. You can see how clearly they love him. Do you want me to bring him in so you can say goodbye? Yeah. And it is sad that they're upset by handing him over, but, you know, they've done the right thing for him. There we are. Hello, Charlie. There Hello, we are. Brother. I think once he's cleaned up and he's got his treatment, he's a little dog, he's, he'd make a lovely, lovely little, lovely little companion. See you on the other side. For now, it's off to the vets to get poor Charlie properly treated. Hi, Charlie. Eight-year-old Shih Tzu Charlie has been signed over to Sarah Gardner. He has significant fur loss and black skin. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> He's a bit chatty. Charlie likes the sound of his own voice. He does. Oh, that's sweetheart. And now he's on vet Christine Jameson's table, it's clear how extensive the problem is. Certainly got a skin condition. I think that goes without saying. The most likely cause is probably fleas. Common things are common. But there are not really anything obvious on him. So we would treat him for fleas anyway but it also might be worth ruling out other parasites like mange, which we can check out with a skin scrape. And it also could be that he's actually allergic to something. So we're just gonna to need to work our way through everything in a logical manner to get to the bottom of it. The darkening of the skin is because it's been going on a long time and the skin pigmentation changes. You need to get your skin sorted out, make you feel better, sweetheart. Good groom. Rid of silly mats, eh? Christine is going to take four sets of skin scrapings from different areas of Charlie's body to analyse for parasites. Right. Good boy. Boy. Good lad. There's a good boy. What a good little soldier. That's the first one. There we are. Good boy. 
He says, oh, I liked you a minute ago. OK, so he's fallen out with me big time now. No, I'm not so keen. But we need to do it from multiple sites because you only need a few to cause a problem and you've got to give yourself a good chance of getting them, finding them. There's a there good we go. boy. It's okay. There we go, sweet pea. Good lad. Hmm? While they wait for the results of the scrapings, Christine has an idea. Are you going to have a bath first, though, little man? Could let Auntie Charlotte bath you at West Hallam, because she's done a grooming as well. She may look handsome. Oh, we'd like that. I think that would be a really good idea. Come on, then. I'm going to go and have a nice bath. Oh, he's a big lad. We'll see how Charlie's transformation goes later. Good boy. Charlie's owners made the right decision to hand him over, but some dogs aren't that lucky. Every year, tens of thousands of dogs are abandoned and left to fend for themselves. And that's just what happened to this beauty, Belgian Shepherd Chino. Three days ago, Inspector Anthony Pulfer was called to an emergency where a dog had been found in someone's garden with its front legs bandaged up. Immediately obvious to me was this dog was unable to walk and also that it, it had some recent veterinary treatment. Uh, the bandages that were on its front legs were certainly not something that a member of public would put on those legs. All right, sweetheart. There were very old bandages that had possibly been on there a few days, very weighty, quite wet. Good girl. Come on, sweetheart. The damage to her legs was so bad that she physically couldn't walk. So I do generally think she'd been dumped there by a previous owner. Come on, sweetheart. Good girl. It's OK. You know, it's inexcusable. Thank God for members of the public that phoned the RSP said, It's all right, darling. It's OK. Yeah, it's, it's mind-blowing sometimes what, 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 what you find in this job. Anthony took the dog straight to the vets to see what was going on underneath the bandages. The bandage on the, uh, the front right leg then showed a, a catheter, which only really, you know, is, is obviously put in an animal through a veterinary surgeon. On the other leg, there was lots of intermittent wounds. I mean, this dog possibly had been hit by a car previously um, and received some initial veterinary treatment it's just, just, just unimaginable. I've never, ever had that in my career, to find an animal in such a, a vulnerable position. The dog's microchip revealed this poor animal is a two-year-old female called Chino. Anthony contacted her registered owner and learned she used to be a security dog, but was sold a year ago, and there are no records on who to. He's brought Chino to veterinary surgeon Laura Ruiz Oliver. Hello, Hello how morning. are you? Good morning. Oh, thank you for seeing me. No problem, pleasure. Oh. Hello. This is, this is Chino. OK. She's a two-year-old Belgian Shepherd. OK, good girl. She's had the buster on just to try and okay. stop her from maybe interfering with down here, her legs. Yeah. It looks very swollen as well, apart from that. It looks like there's some neurological damage as well. OK. I think probably she's got radial nerve paralysis by the looks of it, the way she's holding the leg. Mm. And that's quite common when the animals are dragged on the, uh, on the road by a car, and sometimes that all the nerves under the armpit, they are pulled and damaged. So, okay. so we need to check all that. As well as nerve damage, Laura will be looking for infection and broken bones. But first, she's checking Chino's good legs. The nerve supply of the back leg seems to be quite good. So, you know, in terms of how we're going to manage the left foreleg, it's quite important to know how all the other legs are working as well. No pain on the spine, which is great as well. It's a bit more, a bit sore, this leg, actually. It's a bit swollen. Good girl. A bit hot, so there's quite a lot of inflammation there, probably because of the infected wounds and because it's infected. Literally, kind of the skin is dying off a little bit. And underneath, look, Anthony, is the same. Actually, the main part is all, oh. or is, it has been abused oh. around here. Um, there is a skin infection yeah. with, um, you know, quite a lot of bacteria in it, which might run the risk of, yeah. you know, if it progresses all the way up, you know, affecting the whole leg. And that put her life at risk. Exactly. Laura suspects the left foreleg has profound nerve damage, but she needs to test how far up the loss of sensation goes. Okay. Let's see if you can feel anything, shall see we? See what can, she can see. 
Let's just see whether she's got some sensitivity there. I don't think she can feel very much here. So sad to see. Yeah. She can't feel anything, unfortunately. Obviously, we can't leave the leg like this. We need to do something yeah. fairly quickly. Yeah. I'm probably thinking about leg amputation because mm. in cases when there is a neurological damage, a neurological impairment, amputation is actually the absolute surgical indication for that condition. The prognosis is what Anthony feared. Chino will have to have her leg amputated. You know, this leg probably could never have been saved. But it's the not treating, the not acting, which is so frustrating and uh, completely unnecessary. For now, she will rest until tomorrow's major surgery. Does that by taking your phone in, please? Every 30 seconds, someone calls a helpline to report an abused or neglected animal. And there are scores of animal centres across the country who provide a safe place for these animals to rest and be cared for. One of those is Blackberry Farm in Aylesbury. Kerry Grace is preparing the pens for playtime for a litter of 10 dumped puppies. Before the puppies come in here, we have to completely disinfect the area. When they came in, they had really bad diarrhea. Um, and because of their age, they've got such a low immune system as well, so we have to make sure it's all really clean. Inspector Mel Fisher brought these guys to the centre a few weeks ago and they weren't in the best state. Oh, they're so cute. Hello, puppies. <laughs> Hello, how have you been? Hello, everyone. So how are they doing? They're doing really well. Um, when they first came in, they were lethargic um, and they were quite quiet. They did have diarrhoea, it was quite bad, and they did have blood in it as well, so we were all quite worried. And then they've been on some worming treatment, and the bigger dogs, because they seem to have sort of a better immune system, um, it has worn off with them. Some of the littler ones have still got diarrhoea, so we've had to separate them. Shockingly, Mel found them along with six other abandoned puppies under a piece of plastic inside a rubbish bin in a field. When I got them out of the bin, it was that what was during the hot spell, so they were all panting and they were all really quiet. Yeah. Um, especially the little ones because they were just in such baking heat. They were so unpuppy like, they were very quiet, very thirsty. Um, and to see them now acting like proper puppies and causing chaos is just lovely because they are little personalities again, which is brilliant. <laughs> oh, that is the microphone there, little yes, one. You're gorgeous. You're trouble. Yes, you are. It's a far cry from that bin for these four. They are lovely they and crazy are. and just what puppies should be doing. Yeah, it's good they've got each other to Hello, play with Babs. as well. And we try to socialise them as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so we get them out every day to play and things like that. And being puppies, it won't take long for them to find new homes. Puppies do go really, really quick, but um, we make sure that the owners that are going to take them home have plenty of time to spend with them, properly socialising them, because growing up in kennels isn't great for them. So we definitely make sure they've got a really good home to go to. The ten puppies were split into groups, according to their sizes and play styles. The two smallest were Norman and Agnes. They're a lot brighter as well, and um, look, it's great to see Norman looking a bit chubbier like he should do as a pug, because he was quite scrawny when he first came in. Yeah. We purposely put them together, because um, they do like playing together, and they have really sort of similar play styles as well. Um, with the other ones, because they're a lot bigger and more boisterous, um, poor little Norman got bullied a little bit. So um, now that we've separated them, um, they're getting on really great. Most of the day, they just like chilling, um, and then they come out to socialise together as well. Um, they're definitely best friends. <laughs> I do love Norman. <laughs> the biggest two are called Davina and Jim. So they're much more boisterous how they play, so we just have to separate them um, from the little ones. Again, they're really bouncy, really yeah. interacting with people. Yeah, they're full of life. They've got so much energy, um, and they just play all day. So they've got loads of toys to keep them occupied. 
These two also came to the centre with bad stomachs and diarrhoea. They are a little bit older than the others, we think, and because of their larger breed, their immune system is a little bit stronger, so they manage to fight it off much quicker. Mel's investigation into how these guys came to be dumped in a bin has hit a dead end, and there is no way to find out who did something so cruel. But at least they were rescued and have the chance to find new homes. Find out how they do later on. Hello again, you little monkey. Earlier, Sarah Gardner took scruffy, itchy Charlie for some skin scrapes at the vets. And while they wait for the results, she's taken him to Charlotte Reynolds, who will tackle his tangles. Where do you want him? We'll just pop him on here. Come on, soldier, good lad. Oh, dear me. Right, then. OK. So, yeah, if you just hold him there, I'll start. I'll just take it all off. I think so, yeah. It's, it's pretty patchy, and we can get underneath all that. Cool. I don't think I bought him. Oh, Don't look at me like that. You'll feel better afterwards. Oh, he's a mess, isn't he? He is. Bless him. Well, it'll uh, allow it to breathe, and we can get the medication on him easier. Do you have to film while they're doing my bum? Oh, it's a good boy. See? Not that bad, is it? It's as if I have in your bum shape. <laughs> 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 You're not going to win any beauty contests, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. It's better already, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Not those mats. Mm -hmm. uh. Charlotte washes him with an antibacterial shampoo to get rid of the grease and open up the pores so the skin medication can be effective. It's got um, soothing properties in, so it'll help yeah. take the itch out straight away. Oh, yeah, and it'll start to cool skin. Mm. Oh, Charlie certainly has a way with the ladies. Oh, no. Must be those eyes. You are very sweet, actually. He is, isn't he? Mm. I think Daisy might need a little brother. Amazing, isn't it? Oh. The skin's looking a bit better already. Yeah. It's taken the greasy out. It's, it has, isn't it? It's not as hot. Not as hot. No. He's given an anti-parasitic treatment. I'm just going to pop it on in different places. I think he'll make a lovely pet. He's um, a really lovely dog, a loving dog, and all he just wants is a bit of attention. Slightly fallen in love with him myself, actually. Now Charlie's angels have finished with him, he'll be taken to a shelter where the search for his new family can begin. OK. Coming up, abandoned Belgian shepherd Chino goes in for surgery to remove her leg, and it's not a minute too soon. It's much worse than yesterday when we saw her in the consultation. It's all going necrotic and, and it's quite... The skin is lying off here underneath as well. Belgian Shepherd Chino was found abandoned on the side of a road with her legs in bandages. She's barely even using this leg. Okay, so that, we're going to start the induction now. When they were removed, they revealed a damaged, infected leg that needed to be urgently amputated. We're going to set her up for an X ray. So you have an infection of a limb, can pass into the bloodstream and therefore all the bacteria and the toxins of the limb would pass into the bloodstream and therefore the rest of the body and the, the animal could die. Before Laura operates, she sedates and x-rays Chino to check she has no other internal injuries that could complicate her surgery. There could be some trauma in the chest or in the abdomen, so it's quite important that we check those, checking the lungs for any contusions or rib fractures. She seems quite stable from the cardiovascular point of view. Her heart and lungs seem to be quite stable. But we need to check those uh, before we start the long anaesthetic. You were OK? Yeah. Perfect. That's fine. 
we're ready to go. She has been on a course of antibiotics and intravenous fluids to prepare her body for surgery. You can see the legs here, how they are. It's much worse than yesterday when we saw her in the consultation. It's all going necrotic and, and it's quite, the skin is lying off here underneath as well. So you would mind to start clipping her? We'll do a white clip for me and, you know, we'll amputate uh, quite proximal yep. to the joint. The leg is suspended to keep the area sterile, and a padded bandage is wrapped around the limb to reduce swelling and fluid retention at the surgical site. OK, so um, we're going to do um, amputation at the level of the mid-humerus. Mid so pretty much we're going to do an incision around here. It's not something that we do, you know, I mean, we normally repair more legs than we amputate, which is a good thing. Uh, but sometimes, I mean, in cases like this, when there's, there is a neurological deficit, amputation is the absolute indication for cases like this. It's a big and bloody operation. So, so at the moment, we're outlining the area where we're going to resect. Laura cuts through the skin and muscle and reaches a number of major blood vessels that each need to be tied off. Normally, the arteries come with the vein together, so there's normally two big vessels next to each other. There's, um, you know, four big ones, uh, and then, you know, little ones as well. That's the vessel that supplies most of the legs, so it's important to get it ligated. But the swollen, infected limb is adding a complication to the surgery. An amputation is um, a straight, straightforward procedure. Unfortunately, in cases in which the leg is inflamed and infected, it becomes very challenging because the tissues are very inflamed. The blood vessels are enlarged and much more prominent, and therefore it's much more difficult to control the bleeding. Could I have some more swaps, please, Shannon? Thank you. There's certain vessels um, in, the, in the leg, they are quite big. So, for example, you, if you cut um, a big vein or a big artery without tying it off, then, I mean, the bleeding is unstoppable. It's always a messy operation because you're taking a leg out. Could, I, could you just get me some soaps, please? More soaps, that would be great, thank you. Now the vessels are tied off, it's time to saw the bone. Look away if you're having your tea. Is she okay? Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so let's take the leg off. Right. How is she doing? Yeah, fine. Heart rate's coming down. I love surgery. It would be my hobby if it wasn't my job, I, I think. It's nice to be able to heal animals and to make their lives better. So I think I'm, I'm really honored to be able to do that. Nearly there. Maybe one before last. OK. It's taken two hours and more than 30 stitches to safely amputate Gino's leg. The return to life in, in amputation is actually quite good. So after, you know, after they have like the, their surgery, it's quite amazing how they cope, you know. So, and also they have three other legs, which makes a difference too. What a brave girl. It's a long road to recovery for poor Chino, and we'll see how she adjusts to life as a tripaw later. Now it's time to catch up with Charlie the Shih Tzu, who had an itchy, painful skin complaint that had gone untreated for months. Hello, sausage. Hello. Cheeky chap Charlie was handed over for rehoming to Inspector Sarah Gardner. Oh, darling, that looks really sore. He had extensive fur loss and itchy, irritating skin. The most likely cause is probably fleas, but there are not really anything obvious on him but his bedraggled appearance softened the heart of those who met him. You are very sweet, actually. 
is, isn't it? Mm, I think Daisy might need a little brother. <laughs> and his search for a new home took less than 24 hours. Come on, baby. He's now living with Charlotte Reynolds, the person who groomed him. So I first decided I really wanted him was when I was bathing him. And he just looked at me and, yeah, I was like, yeah, you're coming home with me. You're coming home. Kind of fell in love with him straight away. He was a, quite a sweet little person. It was just the nurse in me that wanted to make him better, but there was just something about this little person that I just sort of fell in love with and, yeah, gave him a nice home. Charlotte has nursed Charlie and his coat back to full fluffy health. The reason for his um, skin complaints, it turns out he's got um, a lot of food allergies. He's allergic to things like meat and grain, so he's on a special fish and potato complete dog food. Come on, good boy. He's also allergic to a type of pollen, but Amos. daily medication means he can still enjoy being outdoors. Seems to be working, we're getting all his hair back. Got a bit to go on his underneath, but yeah, it's, it's coming on quite nicely. I think before when he came into us, he was he would he was have been very very sore, very itchy. You know, his his skin had completely all thickened up. I think he's a lot more comfortable, a lot happier. So it doesn't really affect his day to day, and he likes his sweeties, so he can always get his tablets down in quite easily. <laughs> well, he's definitely got his wag back. I love Charlie. He's just. A big dog in a little suit is probably the best way I can describe him. He's just, he knows what he wants, he knows how to get it, and he certainly uses his puppy dog eyes to get them as well. It's just his cheekiness, and he just wants to please and be with you, and like I say, you can't be mad at him for long because he just looks at you with those big eyes and, yeah, and just gets away with it. <laughs> Good boy. Come on, up. He's become a hit at work as well. So I bring him most of the time to work. He uh, he seems to like it, and everyone likes him, and he's certainly a big personality in the practice. Hiya, morning. Hi, darling. Come on, hey, Charlie. Come, Come on, kids. kids. And he gets on with all the other dogs, that the, uh, the staff dogs that they bring, and, uh, yeah, they just have a bit of a play and a bit of a sleep. He's a slacker when it comes to work. No, if he, if he can get away with just sitting there doing nothing and have loads of cuddles, he will. He deserves a bit of a, a, a comfy, easy life, considering how uncomfortable he must have been. So, yeah, so I can't begrudge him a little bit of a cuddle every now and again, more often than not. He's just part of the family now, and he was right from the get-go, to be honest. I can't imagine life without Charlie now. No, no. I feel like I've had him forever. He's, uh, he's just settled in so much and he gives just as much love back as, as we give him. Well done, Charlie. It's been just two weeks since Chino had her front left leg amputated. Good girlie. Let's go. Oh, you ready? Good girl. Helping her recuperate is animal care assistant Steph White. Yeah, so she was a little bit sore at first, which is understandable really after an operation. Um, but she was really quick to bounce back on her feet, quite literally. She's been settling in really, really well. Um, she's been coping amazingly with only three legs. Um, she's been kind of amazing with it, super resilient, super happy. After a leg amputation, it's important a dog learns how to move with just three legs, but also that they recuperate slowly. So at the moment, um, just while she's healing from the operation, she's only on short walks, um, just to make sure that she doesn't bother the staples in the opposite leg and she doesn't open up the wound. And it's healing really, really nicely, so it's just all about keeping an eye on it, make sure it keeps nice and clean. Losing a front limb takes more time to adjust to than losing a back leg because the dog needs to learn how to counterbalance the weight of their head. I think definitely at first they tend to overcompensate slightly where the leg would have been. 
she has to essentially prepare herself forwards to be able to compensate for the other leg that's missing. It kind of looks like she ends up leaping, but she isn't, she's just walking normally. <laughs> So we're going to do like a little bit of basic training exercises and just see how she's getting on. If she does it with me, she might show me up. You ready? Hey, Gally, what's this? Can you sit? Good girl, very good. Good girly. What's this? Good. Can you go down? Good girl, very good. It's a little bit of a workout as well without her running around, um, which is quite good for her to build up the muscles as well. Initially, it's going to be a lot more tiring for her, but I think it's something that she's going to get better at. Once the muscles build up around it, they'll be able to compensate for everything else. She is really, really sweet, really, really playful. I think she's quite an active girl, and despite having only three legs, she's doing really, really well. Um, I think she kind of likes to turn everything into a game if she can. We'll see how Chino's hunt for a new family goes later on. Coming up. If you think you've got what it takes to rehome a dog, we might have just the one for you. Good Kelly. Chino is adapting to life with three legs amazingly well. She has to essentially prepare herself forwards to be able to compensate for the other leg that's missing. It kind of looks like she ends up leaping, but she isn't, she's just walking normally. <laughs> And just 12 weeks after her major operation, she found her new home with the Norman family. a big dog. My parents wanted us to have a small dog and when I saw her picture, I saw her picture first and then I realised that she had a missing leg and my parents were like, no, it's too big and I researched the breed and I went, no, 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 actually, she's actually a medium breed. So that, that helped in the persuasion. Hey! I kind of um, left Hannah to look and find her dog. I, I'd set some criteria. She needs to be small to medium, short haired, cross breed, so and female. To small and to medium, you said? Yeah, Sorry. and she's definitely female, but the rest, well. Ready? Come on. Hannah chose her, and uh, the kids fell in love with her the first time we saw her, and she's so nice. You said? A poor? Thank you. We adopted Chino, but Chino's adopted us. When she first came to the Normans, she was still adjusting to life as a tripod. I guess the only problems would be that she sometimes falls on her face like when she's get, catching the ball. And she's still very strong. Like even when we're playing like with the raggy and with the duck and stuff, she's very strong. Come on, yes, I know. It's so exciting. Come on. Coming downstairs, yeah. uh, like the stairs in the house, can be a problem, so we use a, a harness. Come on. But otherwise, she's fine. She'd, you, know, you wouldn't know that the leg is missing. Oh, you put your shoes in the best place. Yeah, I know, right? Oh. Despite loving a snooze, her previous training as a guard dog wakes her up at just the right time. After a couple of nights, three o'clock in the morning, she started barking. And um, I'm going, she, you know, be quiet. And Hannah came down and slept with her. But in fact, we uh, had a burglar break into my wife's car. And she, you know, was alerting us. And she's just, um, you know, being a good guard dog, she knew something was going on, even though we didn't. So next time I hear a bark like that, I'll be up at the window to find out what's going on. Now we have CCTV and we have Chino. She's done really well. We are enjoying the process of having having Chino with us. Um, it's, it's, it's been fun. Mm. It's, it's been... Um, it's very yeah. sweet, very friendly. Yeah, she, she's comfortable. And that makes us comfortable. She's very playful. If she sees you with the tennis ball, if she wants the tennis ball. She isn't going to do anything until she gets her tennis ball. Oh, so close. Once the squirrels so are there, she's, yeah. she's gone, she's off. And she definitely wants to keep this garden her own. No pigeons, no squirrels, nothing else. Um, but she does tire quickly. You can see that she's putting a lot of energy into that one leg. So she'll have 
big bursts of energy, then she'll lie down and she'll rest. And another big burst and she'll lie down and rest. And if she goes out for a walk, really, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and that's enough for her. I think this is it, as yeah, I say. It's really yeah. to provide a, a home for her, a loving environment, and, you know, she's part of the family. A forever home? A home. forever home, yeah. Oh. yeah. What a fantastic turn in fortunes for this beauty, from being abandoned at a roadside with a broken leg to finding a wonderful new family home. Well done, you. And remember the ten puppies abandoned in a dustbin? Well, we're pleased to say they have all found new homes. Great news for those little guys. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Teddy. He is a three and a half months old German Shepherd cross Akita. He's been at Woodside, Leicester, for about two months or so. Ted came to us via an inspector who'd had a call to say that he'd got a damaged leg and they didn't know what to do with him. So once he'd been signed over by his original owner, then he came into our care at Woodside. Yeah. It's a shame for Ted that he's not been able to go straight into a new home, but I'm hoping that now he's getting uh, well, we can find him the right home. The perfect home for Ted would be uh, somebody with large breed experience, possibly with another dog, um, but not with small animals, because he's a bit of a chaser. Somebody who's going to also have time to um, carry on with his training. <laughs> he enjoys playing as well. He loves his tennis balls, uh, and he, he certainly loves his food. Ted really deserves um, the chance for a good forever home. He's had a really bad start in life and uh, he needs somebody who's going to help him get through the rest of his physio and give him the forever home he deserves. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Cassie. They're just going a bit stir crazy, aren't they, Anita? Two border collies need rescuing from an owner whose life has spiralled out of control. I don't think it's very fair on them, is it, really? Living like that. It's a shaggy dog story. It's a strange looking dog, isn't he? In, in a nice way. When Inspector Anthony Joins meets elderly Alfie. He looks like a cartoon character, doesn't he? And I'm with Kevin, a very special rescue dog who's helping his owner lead a fulfilling life. 